I think what I'm hoping people will take away from the exhibition is that there's this huge, rich historical history of magic and folklore that kind of lies behind the Harry Potter books and that a lot of things that they might have thought were imaginary have, are actually based on fact. So the idea about bazaar stones, they can come and see a real bazaar stone, they can come and see alchemical manuscripts describing how to make the Philosopher's Stone, they can see Nicholas Flamel's tombstone, and hopefully they'll be really inspired by that and inspired by the history in the stories and understand that J.K. Rowling knew a huge amount about sort of the mythology, the folklore, and the science and the and the magic behind the stories that she she incorporated very lightly into her stories, which gave them a huge amount layers of, of depth and interest. So at the moment we're in the divination room. Uh, it's my favourite room in the exhibition, and I think divination uh, is kind of treated with a bit of humour in the books and uh, as if it's not too serious a subject. But I actually love the kind of historical accounts of it and all the different ways that people have tried to work out what's going to happen in the future. We've got um, books about palmistry and tea leaf reading and some kind of practical um, equipment that you could use for those things. Uh, it's really interesting, so in the Harry Potter books, uh, when uh, Harry sees a, a symbol of a black dog in his cup and that's thought to be an omen of death, but we've actually got a book that indicates that if you see a dog in your cup, that's a sign of a faithful friend, so it's a bit more positive. I really love the, the Ripley Scroll, which is a, a real favourite, but I, I also really enjoy the Bazaar Stones, which, uh, which are mentioned in the stories, obviously, which are congruence of matter that form in the guts of goats, believed to be uh, antidotes to poison, so yeah, there's lots of favourites. So it looks at the magic, the nature of belief, the ideas about science and what, it, what, you know, what the relationship between science, belief and magic actually is. And for a lot of these guys, they're engaging in all sorts of things of, the, of a similar ilk in the early modern period. I think one of the things I learned about witches is that they 
get a really bad rep through history and that it's quite hard to find positive accounts of them, which is what we really wanted to focus on in the exhibition. But once we did start looking for positive accounts, they were out there, they were just a bit rarer. Um, and I'm really excited that we're able to show a painting by John William Waterhouse called The Magic Circle, which is a very positive portrayal of a witch. Um, she's very kind of beautiful and she's doing protective magic and it's different from the kind of um, more traditional uh, negative view of witches that you get in a lot of um, books of the time. Well, I think the Harry Potter books have done a lot to change that. I think um, trying to think about magic as something that can be used for good in the books is a really important part of them. So.